Hi everybody, I'm Bill Whittle and this is The Firewall. Well, cultural appropriation is the latest form of combat used by social justice warriors. That's a term used by cry bullies to describe themselves as fighters against prejudice and privilege. They're the first warriors in history to burst into tears and require weeks of therapy at the mere sight of an actual weapon. Now, there's only one area where these progressive millennials are not only allowed to, but actually encouraged to compete in, and that is the struggle to see who can be the biggest victim and win the virtue signaling silver cup by being the most sensitive to racial and gender injustice. Cultural appropriation is the idea that white males have stolen various elements of minority and female culture and used them for their own benefit without acknowledging or appreciating the suffering of the offended party. It's everywhere, but the best example so far is a video shot at San Francisco State University where a black student confronts a white student who is culturally appropriating African-American dreadlocks. Let's watch for a moment, shall we? You're saying that I can't work, have a hairstyle because of your culture? Yeah. Why? Because it's my culture. You know what the box means. Yo, girl, stop touching me right now. Yo, girl, stop touching me right now. That's no reason, yo. I don't need your disrespect. I don't need your disrespect. Why are you filming this? Just for everyone's safety. Listen, I get it. If anybody's on their side, I am. As a straight white male, I see these feminists and students of color appropriating my white male culture every day. When I think of them walking around in blue jeans using electricity to light their dorm rooms or to run their microwave ovens so that they can eat non-Anglo-Saxon food, well, frankly, it makes me sick. They sit there using their smartphones to write about social injustice and then use the internet to post it on Facebook and Twitter. And as a white male, I find this incredibly offensive. Do these racists ever give a thought to the fact that they're not dying in their 20s and 30s because of immunization, pasteurization, antiseptics, and antibiotics? When they go to the hospital, do they think about the suffering and back-breaking work by unknown white males in order to bring them laser surgery, MRI scans, artificial ventilators, and all the rest? Do they give an instant thought to the, the fact that none of them have developed polio or scores of other infectious diseases? Nope. They just culturally appropriate these things, and then they use them inauthentically. But what really, really makes me lose my mind is when I look down the aisle of an airplane. Oh yeah, they're reading articles about Beyonce and they're listening to Drake and Kanye West, but how many of these feminists and social justice warriors of color know the name of the man that invented the jet engine that is carrying them from their parents' house to their hissy fits at the University of Ottawa or Oberlin or Yale, Harvard, Missouri, and all the rest at 550 miles an hour? Not one of them, I'll bet. Not one. His name was Whittle, you ignorant, insensitive, racist pigs. I just want to get up and slap every one of them, but, you know, that's a white thing you wouldn't understand. And of all of the things that social justice warriors have culturally appropriated from white men, the one thing that I demand full recognition of is rap. Mary Margaret as a midsummer flower, gentle as a falcon or a hawk of the tower, with solace and gladness, much mirth and no madness, all good and no badness, so joyously, so maidenly, so womanly, her demeaning and everything far, far passing, that I can indict or suffice to write. Hip-hop rhyming is called Skeltonic Verse and it was invented by the man that wrote those lines, white male John Skelton, who was born in England in 1463. Now, if all of this sounds petty and ridiculous and racist and utterly barking mad to you, well, it sounds that way to me too. But that's who these progressive cry bully tribalists are, insecure fascists who want to tell other people how to wear their hair. They become apoplectic about things like the Washington Redskins, but they may want to take a lesson from another despised and marginalized group of American immigrants, and that would be the Irish. The two great slurs leveled against the immigrant Irish concerned their drunkenness and their violence. Here's the mascot they chose for themselves at Notre Dame. It's a drunken, fighting leprechaun. And here's the parade that they have annually. And here's the green beer we all drink on St. Patrick's Day. And once a year, everyone in America is Irish, including this left-wing, divisive, Alinskyite agitator. That's because unlike the social justice weenies, the Irish have a sense of humor, which they no doubt culturally appropriated from our common African ancestors. So, Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, why don't you grow up, ya whiny little crybabies? We need your help to keep these messages coming. If you want to help us make a difference, please go to BillWhittle.com and become a member.